Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. I have some really exciting news to share with you. NiceHash has updated the NB Miner plugin within the NiceHash Miner to now support all the overclocking features that's built into NB Miner. So now we can specify core clock offset, memory clock offset, fan, and even locked core clock values directly within NiceHash. This is a huge step forward for us miners. It was just recently I did a video on using the locked core clock technology, and I was so excited, and I still am, and I was really looking forward to this day. And the best part is, is this day finally came. It is here and now. So if you haven't already subscribed, smash down on that subscribe button and stick with me. I'm going to show you how to use MB Miner's overclocking technology native within NiceHash. Let's get started. Having the NB Miner plugin updated within NiceHash to be able to seamlessly work with NB Miner's overclocking parameters is an absolute game changer in my opinion. It's beneficial for my full hash rate cards, it's beneficial for my light hash rate cards, and it's beneficial because it lets me support multiple algorithms too. That's right, so I'll have a specific set of overclocks that I'll apply to a card when I'm mining on NB Miner for Dagger Hashimoto for Ethereum. However, if I change over to mining on, let's say, Ravencoin, I'll be using Kapow, but I'll be using a different set of overclocks. And that's where the full beauty of this technology comes in, because now it's paired up between a miner and algorithm for a specific card. You can change your overclocks and specify it individual per card. Let me show you. In my computer, I currently have MSI Afterburner open as well as NiceHash. I've just updated to the latest version, 3.0.69. I believe though all this stuff should still work with the plugin update in 3.065 in my earlier testing I was doing off camera. So if you have 3.0.65, you're probably okay as well. I just wanted to get the latest version just to make sure I'm up to date with it. In my computer, you'll notice under the devices, I have two graphic cards, full hash rate RTX 3070 on the motherboard. And then I have a second card. I have a RTX 3080 LHR card. So we're going to simulate a mini multi-computer PC and it'll make for a better demonstration. Normally I would use tools like MSI. I would come right into Afterburner and I would specify this is my power limit, this is my core clock offset, as well as this is my memory clock offset. And then I would go to the other card and I would make sure I would have those overclocks also set there. Let me just click to make sure I'm only going to be running um, Degra Hashimoto and be minor. Okay, so we're just going to try to start mining on Ethereum within NiceHash. So I'm going to start up this miner. You'll notice two miner windows start. That's because the LHR parameters are set differently between them. So one is a full hash rate card. It doesn't need any LHR parameters. And the other one, the 3070, is a full hash rate card. The 3080 LHR is a light hash rate card. However, trick to get around this in NiceHash, when we go to the benchmark parameters, typically I would specify LHR mode of one and LHR value of 74, just like I do there. However, if I want these monitors to work within the same window, even though this is a full hash rate card, I'm still going to put that extra same extra launch parameters. Because for the NB miner, if I pass this in, it's still going to recognize it's going to say, hey, as a full hash rate card, buddy, and it's not going to try to apply any of the LHR logic. T-Rex is a different story, but we'll save that for another video. So doing this now, and then if I start it up, now both of the cards are going to start up within the same miner. And that's more of what I want. I'm not doing anything that's so different that I don't want it to run in the same miner. And I'm seeing that 3080 using LHR mode 1 and LHR value of 74. That's great. That's exactly where I want it to be. But we're using all the overclocks that I just specified from MSI Afterburner. So every time I reboot my computer, I have to make sure that I have my overclock set. Every time if I'm going to be changing my coins or algorithms that I'm going to be mining, I have to go into MSI Afterburner. And doing the overclocking becomes probably one of the biggest manual processes when you're using tools like NiceHash to do a lot of your mining because it becomes a lot of extra added work as well as potential that if you don't overclock it, they may not be running well as well. That's what has me so excited about this new miner. So let's get right into it. So for my two graphic cards, let's just look at them one at a time. So let me look at my RTX 3070. It's a full hash rate card. I'm going to go to my benchmark tab 
and I'm going to pick the graphic card my RTX 3070 and I scroll down until I see Dagger Hashimoto which is Ethereum NB Miner I already have it benchmarked and I'm going to click on this settings when settings pop up it's going to give me my benchmarks as well as power usage. It was taking a very long time on my computer to put in benchmarks. So I just put in default values so I know that it all runs. If I put in 60 million, that thinks it's 60 mega hash and 140 is 140 watts. But I have my standard LHR mode one and LHR value of 74. In the latest version of Nice Hash, it's still not corrected. It's still using the incorrect default values that are prescribed guidance from NB minor, which should be LHR mode of one and 74. But now this is where we get to have fun because in the past when I was using tools like MSI Afterburner, I'd specify power limits, 55, core clock is minus 400 offset and plus 1100 is my memory clock offset. In here now, I'm gonna type dash dash PL, that stands for power limit, and I'm gonna put 55%. Then I'm gonna put space dash dash CCLOCK, minus 400. From my last parameter for the overclocks, I'm going to put dash dash M C L O C K for memory clock offset. 1000 is my memory clock offset. I may want to put a fan value in there. Dash dash fan. Maybe I'm going to run my fan at, let's say 70%. That's all I need to specify for this. So I'm using MSI. I just reset it to all its default values. Now, when we go to start it, so see, I started the miner by running it as admin. If I run it without running it admin, it can't do it. You may hear the fan ramping up, but you see the blue text here in all the clocks. Now I have this new window that's specifying the PCI ID. My 3070 is power limit. Power limited, it's quoting me as watts. It's applying the minus 400 on the core clock offset and plus 1000 on the memory and giving me 70% fans. So that's great. It's working. I'm actually overclocking right from within nice hash miner. This is a huge step forward. Best part is, is it's not just limited to your typical overclocking. We have locked core clock too. So let me stop this miner. The only thing I do not like about the NB miner, uh, or at least how it's launched into from nice hash is that you hear the fans are still running in the background. So if I switch cards momentarily and let me switch cards back, and you'll see it still held the same overclocking parameters that we passed in. So normally the, like the T-Rex miner, when you pass in overclocks and you start the miner, when it's done, it resets it on the way out. Seems like for the NB miner, it does not do that under the current version. So I'm just gonna click reset. This way the fans quiet down a little bit. Let's make a few more changes. Under the same Dagger Hashimoto for here, I'm going to open this up, except now for rather than core clock of minus 400. I'm gonna get rid of this power limit here. And I am going to put dash CC LOCK. I wanna do a locked core clock at 1100, but I can't just specify the number or else it considers it to be an offset. So I have to use the at parameter. So I'll do at 1100 and the rest of the parameters are the same. Memory clock 1000, fan 70. Okay, that looks good. And let's start up this miner. This time when the miner starts, you'll see there's an at for the core clock. And that's specifying, this is using a locked core clock right now. So we've just locked the core clock right inside of NiceHash. It gives us a lot more power because now rather than worrying about different cards have different voltage regulators and stuff like that, my card may be getting so many watts at 62%, yours may take 58% to get that same power limit. But by using a locked core clock, we're much more precise with our target. It's running a little bit lower right now. Oh, that's probably because I'm recording. These cards are not gonna show me their optimal hash rate at this time while I have a microphone and a camera plugged in. Now, let's start jumping over to the light hash rate card because that's really where we tend to need a lot of the overclocking, especially locked core, because that's a big advantage. You can do it in MSI with curve editors and stuff like that. You can do it in a few other tools. Being able to do it directly in the miner is a huge benefit in my opinion. Now, if we look at the 3080, which is a light hash rate card, I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to scroll down until I see Dagger Hashimoto in B minor. Now I have my LHR mode one, LHR value of 74. So if I want to replicate these same values that I have 70, 0, and 1200, I could easily do that. Dash dash PL, 70%. I don't need to do a core clock because it's at zero. And I would just do dash dash MCLOCK. One, two, zero, zero. 
and dash dash fan 70. So that's going to tell it use a power limit of 70%, a memory clock of plus 1200, and a fan of 70. So that looks right. And let's start up this miner. You'll see that one of them's uh, 3070 is using the locked core clock because you see it has the at symbol. The 3080 is using a power limit, except it's expressing that power limit as watts, not as a percentage. Mm -hmm. And then you can still see our memory clock offset and our fans. And that's it. It's up and working. Ideally, though, too, I would want to run the 3080 with a locked core clock. So let me just stop this. Go to my cards. So I have my two cards, my 3080. Rather than doing the power limit, dash dash C C L O C K at. And for this card, uh, this one was higher, yeah. 1525. If I really want to try to get the most hash power out of it, I'll probably do like 1600. So one thing that's great about this card too is, is it has a memory thermal so I can see it right on the miner. Let me reset the cards in MSI Afterburner so there's no overclocking being applied. It's just all back at stock settings. And I'm going to start up the miner. Now when the miner starts, I see I have MB Miner 40.1. Always want to confirm that. I see I have two graphic cards. In the blue, you see the 3070. And it has a specific lock core clock and memory clock as well as the 3080 LHR card. For the 3080 LHR card, it's using LHR mode of one and LHR value of 74. We are successfully mining now. I'm really, really excited. This is great. I didn't have to specify any overclocks in MSI. I like the fact too that there's a LHR column in the status value, especially when you have multiple LHR cards that could have different values. Some could be at 74, some could be at 73. At least that tells you this time now what the LHR value is. So, okay, my second status message. Now my 3070 is mining a little bit lower. Again, that's because I'm recording. I have a microphone and a webcam end here. My 3080, wow, it's doing great. 75.88 mega hash. I've let this run and I have over 50 accepted shares and I'm getting great numbers. My 3080 is giving me over 75 mega hash and my 3070 is a little lower because again, I'm recording on this. So, but still great numbers. I have a light hash rate and a full hash rate card. All these overclocks, the fan, the core clocks, the memory clocks offset, it's all being specified right within NiceHash, sending it right into that miner. I'm not fiddling or using MSI Afterburner for any of these overclocks. So for me, this is a huge step forward and I can't wait for all miners to be able to do this. We've just successfully demonstrated how to use built-in overclocking from the NB miner directly within NiceHash. To me, that is a huge win. And the best part is it's not just limited to Ethereum. So if I go back to my benchmark tab, this is my RTX 3070. This is my full hash card. I have Dagger Hashimoto. I've preset a value in here. As we've already reviewed, I've used a lock core clock, a memory clock. If I was gonna mine a different coin, let's say Raven coin, my overclocks would be quite different. So I took it upon myself. I jumped into NiceHash. They actually have an article on mining Raven coin. They gave some guidance for some of the overclocks. I went to the Kapow on NB Miner. I went into the algorithms here, let me disable this and enable Kapow. You can see it has a power limit is 60%, a core clock offset, not locked core clock, a core clock offset of plus 100, memory clock is plus 950 and fan of 75. So I've set a completely different overclock for mining on Ravencoin. Now, if I go down to my light hash rate card, mining Raven, it's not a light hash rate card, it's a full hash rate card. Should mine just like a regular RTX 3080. Dagger Hashimoto, let me disable it. How? Let's enable it and you'll see that I have settings that are specific for mining on Ravencoin. Let me start up this miner. This time when the miner starts, it's going to be applying overclocks that are specific to Ravencoin that I've just defined within that specific algorithm setting. So now I'm coming up, my 3070 is using a specified power limit, it's showing wattage, and it's using plus 100 core clock offset and plus 950 memory, 75 fan. And the 3080 is, you know, using a slight different power limit, but same core clock, memory clock, fan. I have Ethereum with my Ethereum overclocking built in right to the miner. And now I have for Ravencoin, it has its own overclocking parameters. So if it does a switch between NB miner to another algorithm within NB miner, and if I can specify my overclocks, if it does an algorithm change, it's going to automatically take the overclocks with it. To me, that is a huge, huge win. I don't have to worry if, if there's an algorithm change that I have to go back to MSI Afterburner and I have to retune this all. It's gonna be built in automatically if I specify it there. 
And to me, that is the game changer. And I really can't wait for all miners to be able to do this. In this video, I've demonstrated how to use NB miners built in overclocking technology natively within the NiceHash miner. I've shown how you can apply individual overclocks per algorithm, per card, and we've tested it on Ethereum as well as Ravencoin, and we've shown how to do it on our test rig with a full hash and a light hash rate card. I've really enjoyed making this video and sharing this journey with you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up like, smash down on that subscribe button if you haven't already. We welcome all your questions and comments, please put them down below. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Happy mining!